Hello everybody and welcome back to my series where we talk about classical mythology while I crochet. Today we're going to talk about the involvement of the gods in the Trojan War and how that illustrates just how self-serving and selfish they can be sometimes. Achilles had left the battlefield at one point because he had gotten one of his war brides taken away and he decided he just wasn't going to fight anymore which he knew would bolster the Trojan troops because you kind of recognize people by their armor out there so when they don't see Achilles armor they're not as intimidated of the Greek forces. He also asks his mom Thetis to cash in a favor with Zeus so that the Trojans can win for a little bit and it'll really sting the Greek army that he's not there. Zeus comes up with his plan on how he's going to do this at the start of book two of the Iliad and he decides to send a dream to Agamemnon. In this dream, Agamemnon sees one of his trusted advisors, one of the older chieftains that was there, Nestor, and he says, Zeus sent me, Hera convinced all of the gods, we can go take Troy right now, what are you doing sleeping? Let's get up and rally the troops. Agamemnon wakes up from this dream, fully ready to go fight, but first he wants to test his army. So he tells them that they are going to retreat, that they're leaving for home and let's pack up and go because we've been here so long, we should just leave. Much to his surprise, all of the men actually start packing up and getting on their boats. That is until Hera sends down Athena and has Odysseus rally the troops back up and remind them that before they set out, their seer Calchas had watched a snake slither up a tree and eat eight little sparrow babies and its mom, meaning how he interpreted this anyway, that nine years would pass and on the 10th year they would take Troy. Just to remind you, the whole reason that Hera and Athena are so involved is because they lost a beauty contest over a golden apple that said to the fairest one. That is why they want a whole race of people taken off the earth. The real Nestor speaks to the troops and has Agamemnon arrange everybody by clan and says, let's go fight, let's stop being cowards. So when the Trojans see the Greeks outside of their walls, they arrange their army as well. And once they're out there, Paris decides he's going to step out and challenge the best Greek fighter to mortal combat. Then Menelaus steps forward and he immediately chickens out. Hector rightfully tells off his brother, but gets him to agree to the single combat under the terms that whoever wins gets to keep Helen and all of the treasure from Sparta, and everybody else is sworn to truce. So everybody performs the little truce ritual, and then the two get fighting, where Paris immediately starts losing, and Menelaus has him in the most compromising position, where he is dragging him by his helmet, and the strap under the helmet is kind of strangling him a bit. But Aphrodite then intervenes, and she snaps the strap, and then puts mist around Paris and takes him out of the battlefield. She then goes to Helen and says that she should go approach him. Helen's like, I don't want that man. Where are you going to send me next, lady? You already sent me here to my ruin. What ruin are we going to next? But she relents. She goes and she has her little lovemaking session with Paris. Everybody's confused at wh where Paris went and what this means with the whole truce. They're just kind of like confused. And Athena takes the likeness of one of the Trojans and approaches an archer. And she tells this archer, hey, if you take out Menelaus right here, everybody is going to praise you. It's going to be such a cool thing. So like, you should shoot an arrow towards him. She then causes the arrow to, it still strikes him, but it's not a mortal wound, meaning that the truce is ended and everybody starts fighting again. Hera and Athena really cannot leave it alone because they lost a beauty contest. <laughs> 